Hello everyone, in this video I would like to cover everything you need for uh, lab number uh, 2. We are going to uh, calculate a couple of uh, the parameters, we are going to calculate uh, uh, measures of the center, we are going to calculate standard deviation, also we are going to uh, calculate number of the outliers in uh, the uh, data set, set uh, for 2017 and uh, then we will do the same for the data set from 2018. Okay, so let's uh, calculate uh, mean. Mean, so that's just average. So that's what you will need uh, to do, as you remember, in lab number uh, two. Okay. So then let's calculate median. Uh, mean is just the sum of all numbers uh, divided by uh, the number of the points in the data set. Uh, so the median is uh, the center of the data. We Calculated using the uh, median function. Okay, so then let's calculate standard uh, standard deviation, standard uh, deviation, and standard deviation. So that's uh, the um, characteristic of the data spread. So how spread the data is. So standard uh, deviation, and we are going to use standard deviation of the sample because this is the sample of uh, the grades. Uh, as you remember, uh, so hopefully you uh, you read this uh, in uh, in the book uh, that standard deviation of population and standard deviation of the sample they're uh, calculated differently. Uh, standard deviation of uh, the sample uh, contains so-called uh, basis correction, and uh, we divide there by n minus uh, one instead of uh, n in case of the population formula. Okay, so let's uh, use standard deviation of uh, the sample and. So that's what it is. And we are going to use uh, standard deviation uh, to do some calculations uh, for the outliers. Uh, so what is uh, considered an outlier? Uh, as you know, um, hopefully again, <laughs> that um, uh, according to the empirical rule, 95% of the data is uh, accumulated uh, in uh, uh, the interval uh, to standard deviations like to the left and from the, uh, and from the right uh, um, of, the, uh, of the mean. Uh, everything below that and above that uh, we are going to consider as uh, uh, outliers. Okay, so let's put maybe an empirical uh, rule here and uh, let's insert equation, let's say, and this is going to be our. Um, our mean, uh, mean of uh, the mean of the sample. Okay, so where is bar? Right there. Okay, so this is going to be our x bar and uh, plus two s. So s is the usual notation of uh, the standard deviation, standard deviation of the sample. Okay, and then grab this and then we will go here and we will do the same but with the minus okay okay so then this is equal to um, mean is right there uh, minus 2 multiplied by uh, standard deviation so this is this plus it. So this is this plus, okay, and uh, then here we will do same, we'll grab mean and then subtract 2 multiplied by the standard deviation. Okay, so that's uh, what we have, so that's what we have. And uh, uh, if we're above uh, this number, uh, so if we scored above 96.3, so that's, that's that's abnormally good. If you scored less than 48.9, this is abnormally bad. Okay, so that's what we are considering, like with uh, uh, this uh, empirical empirical rule. Okay, and um, uh, how we define uh, outliers in this uh, uh, data set. Okay, so now we know. Yeah, so now we know. Um, uh, what you need like to uh, look for um, 
like after you got your uh, grade uh, for the exam yeah you need to check so you need to check and in order to check yeah, you need like to know what you need to know the mean and you need to know the standard uh, deviation so then you can uh, you can understand your so-called relative a relative uh, standing yeah so in comparison like to uh, other students in, in the class okay and again guys like if you scored less than two standard deviations uh, from the average uh, so that means uh, that means uh, something is wrong yeah okay so how we can calculate uh, number of the outliers so number of the outliers so number of outliers okay so we are going to calculate uh, number of um, uh, points above uh, this uh, uh, this limit here 96.3 and we are going to use uh, count if uh, function uh, this is uh, equal to count if count if and uh, so this is the range so this is our data and the uh, criteria uh, we are going to say uh, this is uh, greater so greater and then then uh, we will grab that uh, value of the cell and uh, the syntax is as follows we need to put and and then select uh, the cell and then uh, close uh, the bracket okay so this is two yeah so two so maybe we can grab this so just press control yeah, and copy it this here so this is higher than this so this is so this is greater than this and then uh, we will do the same from the other side uh, we will write count if count if and then uh, range against this one and then criteria um, so let's go ahead and this is uh, less yeah so this is less then again we put uh, and so this is just the syntaxis for this function uh, so we can select uh, criteria in the cell okay then we select the cell and we say okay okay and uh, this so we can grab this put it here and this is less less than that so let's say this okay so those are our outliers so those are our outliers uh, and we can calculate so we can calculate total total outliers so we can do it in the fancy way so this is sum of these two okay so we have uh, six outliers uh, in total uh, that's what you need to do in the lab number uh, two also also it is asking for um, for the uh, model class uh, model class um, and model class that's the class with the highest frequency if you're talking about the modes uh, a mode is the most uh, frequent element uh, in the in the data set uh, there can be several modes uh, in the data set uh, there can be uh, uh, zero modes uh, uh, in the data set uh, but the model class is the class with the uh, highest uh, frequency uh, and uh, to calculate the modes yeah let's calculate the modes let's see uh, how we can calculate uh, uh, modes of the data set and uh, before uh, before calculating modes uh, themselves uh, let's calculate how many modes do we have in this uh, data set we can uh, calculate it using the number of modes uh, we can calculate it using the uh, count function count function so this is uh, equal to count and i will use uh, mode 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 function and it's going to tell me how many modes how many modes uh, do i have in this data set okay i have i have two modes i have two modes so to properly use the mode mode function to calculate those two modes 
I need to do uh, the following uh, procedure. So I need to follow like the following uh, procedure. So I have two balls. So that means it's kind of array of numbers and I need to populate uh, an array. So in the similar way, I do it for the frequencies. So that's uh, um, how uh, we did uh, this, uh, uh, this calculation. Uh, calculation for uh, the frequencies uh, uh, we selected. So we selected uh, a number of the cells uh, where we want to uh, propagate our frequencies and press Control Shift Enter. So that's what we are going to do uh, here. So those are going to be our modes, uh, and we will have two modes. That is why we are going to select two cells. Okay. So then let's say okay uh, equal to uh, mode mode mode. And that's this data set. And then I will press Control Shift Enter. Okay. So that's uh, what it is. Uh, those are my modes. I don't think you need to calculate modes uh, for uh, lab number two. You just need to um, and to present your uh, model class or model category. Uh, so that's uh, the category or class uh, with uh, the uh, highest frequency. So with the highest frequency. Okay. Okay. So uh, in the next video, I'm going to uh, do the same uh, for the data set um, from 2018, and I'm going to compare like this uh, two uh, data sets. Okay. And we are going to discuss. Uh, uh, some uh, results like and uh, conclusions uh, of this uh, uh, comparison and i'm going to provide a very interesting uh, link uh, with the practical with the practical application to what we covered in the uh, last videos okay uh, but for the lab uh, number two i think that's all you need